Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to ensure first in first out message delivery with Azure Service Bus queues. And we are going to do this with a feature called sessions that Azure Service Bus has. When you work with sessions, you need to assign a session ID to each of your messages and that is how you create sessions and you will be given first in first out guarantee for the messages that have the same session ID. Here in the documentation page, they have a um, that shows how this works. As you can see on the top, we have a list of messages and each of these messages, they have a ID assigned to it. This is the session ID and based on this ID, you can see Azure Service Bus demultiplexed this message queue into four other streams and each one contains the messages that has the same session ID. This way, you can guarantee FIFO delivery for your messages. And any sender can create a session when submitting messages into a topic or queue by setting the session ID property of the message. This can be a string or number or anything that you can use to identify the session. And this session ID property gets mapped to AMQP's group ID property. And these sessions do not get expired and there are no any APIs for create sessions. Basically, you just have to specify the session ID in your message and the session gets created. And in this video, we're going to see how sessions work by implementing this architecture. As you can see on the screen, we are going to create a console application that sends messages to an Azure Service Bus queue and there will be a listener, a consumer, and that is going to be an Azure function that listens to that queue. And that function writes the message to SQL Server. And we have two demos, one that has sessions enabled and the next one with no sessions. Let's see how this works. For implementing this demo, we need few resources on Azure. First, we need a resource group. We need a SQL server and I'm creating that. And after that, Azure Service Bus namespace to contain our queues. And finally, a function app that listens to the queues. And after that, I'm going to create two tables in my SQL Server database to show you how Azure Service Bus queues delivers messages in order. And also, I can create the queues in my CLI script as well, but I'm going to use the portal to do that because I have a few things to explain there as well. Now, as you can see here, we have all the resources that we have created. We have our function app and the database and the service bus namespace as well. Now, if I go into the service bus namespace, here we have some information, the host name and the pricing tier. And to the left, we have this tab queues. And here we are going to create the two queues that I've shown you in the architecture, a session enabled queue and a queue without sessions. For that, I can click here and I can provide the name, max queue size and many other settings. But we don't see an option to enable sessions for this queue. And that is because I have created this service bus namespace in basic pricing tier. Because of that, I'm going into the overview section again and I'm clicking on the pricing tier. Here we have the option to change the pricing tier. I'm going with standard pricing tier and that supports sessions. I'm going to select that. All right, as you can see, successfully updated the service bus. Now I'm going back to queues section. Now if I click this button here, as you can see here, we have the option to enable sessions and also we see a few other settings as well. So let's create the queue. First, I'm going to create the queue that has sessions enabled. I'm going to call this queue S and then I'm going to keep all the other settings as default and then I'm going to enable sessions. Let me create it now. All right, I'm going to create the next queue and that does not have sessions enabled. I'm going to call it queue and then I'm not going to enable sessions here. Let me create that. All right. Now, if you go back to architecture, we have just created these two queues, sessions enabled one and the one that has no sessions. Now we have all the resources that we need on Azure. It's time for us to code an application that sends messages and receive messages. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the tables that we need on my SQL database. Let me do that now. I'm going to create a table that contains the messages that routes through the uh, the service bus queue that has sessions enabled. And I'm going to create a separate table that contains the messages that goes through the queue that does not have sessions enabled. Let me create all these. All right, I have created the tables now. Now it's time for us to create our Azure Functions application. I'm going with this template here. 
and then .NET 6 project. All right, I have created the application and here I have imported database as well. As you can see, we have the database context. Now it's time for us to add two functions as I have shown in the architecture to our project. Let me do that now. I'm going to go and create a new function. It's going to be an Azure function and then it's going to be a service bus queue trigger. And here we have two settings. We can specify the connection string name and the queue name. This is going to be the function that processes messages from the queue that has sessions enabled. First, let me call the connection name that I'm going to create later. I'm going to call it queue connection and then queue name it's going to be SQ and that is the name of the queue that we have given. All right, now let me create it. As you can see, we have the function in place. Now we need to add a few things to this function. The first thing that I'm going to do here is enabling sessions. For that, I can pass in sessions enabled parameter like this and it is going to be true. And after that, I'm going to create the database context and then I'm going to read my queue item from the input of the function and then I'm going to deserialize it it is going to be a entity framework object now and then I'm going to insert that message to the database. All right, let me save that and now it's time for me to create the next function that does not have sessions enabled. Let me do that now. All right, I have done that. As you can see here, the only difference is that we don't have sessions enabled queue here and we don't have is session enabled parameter in this queue receiver. And also we are adding the message to the table that does not contain sessions enabled messages. Now that we have implemented most of our architecture, the final thing that we need to do is creating the console application. All right, now I have just created this console application. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add few variables here to store our connection string and also the queue name and things like that. The next thing that we need is a loop. Basically here what I'm going to do is I'm going to send messages in batches because we need to send a lot of messages. If we send one by one it, it is not going to be efficient. For that I'm going to create a loop that will send 50 batches and in this loop I'm going to call an, another function that sends a batch that contain 100 messages. Right now let me create that function and here we have that function and this function uses this index here to generate the message ID. Now I'm going to create the service bus client and the sender and then I'm going to create the service bus message batch and finally I'm going to add messages to this batch based on the batch size I have specified. All right now I'm adding batches and here I am incrementing the index one by one and I'm going to call the, the JSON property input ID here and finally we can specify the session ID in that message. The message contains a property called session ID. You can pass in any string that you want. It can be a quid or here for this demo I'm going to use S1. All right we have our console application in place. Now we need to update the connection string. For that, let me go into Azure portal. I'm in my service bus namespace. If I go here to shared access policies and we have root manage shared access key, I'm going to copy that. I'm going with primary connection string here. Since this is a demo, I'm going to use the root access key and that has access to manage, listen and send messages. All right, I have copied that. Now I'm going into my console application and then I'm going to paste it here. And now I'm going into the queue consumer application. And here you can see that we have named the connection queue connection. And because of that, I'm going into local settings.json and then I'm going to update the queue connection. All right. Since we are running this demo on Azure, we need to update the queue connection in Azure App Service as well. For that, let me go into Azure portal again. I'm in that resource group. Then I'm going into the function app. And then if I scroll down, we have here configuration. I'm going to create queue connection setting and add the connection string here as well. Let me click save now. The next thing that we need to do is we need to publish our queue consumer application to Azure. For that, I'm going to publish. Here we have the option to select our resource 
I'm going with publish profile mode and then I'm going to update the file. I have already downloaded the publish profile settings file. I'm selecting that, click finish and from here we can publish the application to Azure. Let me do that now. As you can see, I have successfully published the application to Azure. Now we have implemented all the components of our architecture. Let's run this console application and let's see what happens. Now I'm going back to Visual Studio and then I'm going to open my console application. Let me run this now. As you can see, it is sending the batches that I have created and it has already sent thousand messages to the queue. Now if I go into the Azure portal and if I go into the queue that has sessions enabled, we can see the statistics. We have 2000 approximately messages in the queue. If I click refresh, as you can see, we have 3000 messages. All right, as you can see, we have sent all the batches to the service bus queue. Now if I go back again and click refresh here, as you can see, the number is gradually going down. Now let me go into the database and let's see the number of messages that we have in our database. As you can see here, we have around 1500 messages. Now let's wait for a few minutes until we have zero messages in the queue. All right, as you can see, we have zero active messages in the queue now. Let me go into SSMS and then let's do a count here from my two tables. As you can see, we have all the messages in session messages table. Let's see whether we have any out of order messages in the table. Now, since I have enabled primary key and identity constraints in this table, we can guarantee that this will have a correctly incremented ID column. As you can see here, all the messages in the table got created in order. Basically, it matches with the auto incremented ID. Now, if you looked at the architecture that we had, we have tested this flow. Basically, we have tested the path where we have sessions enabled. Now it's time for us to test this path and that is the one that has no sessions. Now let me go into Visual Studio and then I'm going to remove this session ID and then I'm going to direct the messages to the queue that has no sessions. All right, let me run this application now and let's see what happens. As you can see, the batches are getting created. Now, if I go into my Azure portal and this is the queue, as you can see here, we have 52 messages and we have zero messages. And if I click refresh again, we have around 57 messages. As you can see here, unlike before, the messages are getting processed really fast. In the demo before, it took around 10 minutes to process all the messages. But here, as you can see, we have zero active messages. And as you can see, we have pushed all the messages from our console application to service bus queue. And as you can see, they all got processed really fast, almost instantly. Now I'm going into SSMS again. And as you can see here, in our last demo, all the messages that we sent got a matching position with our auto incremented ID. Let's see, let's run the same query here as well. As you can see, it does not match. We have a lot more records that does not match here. If I remove the count all and select all the things here, as you can see, we don't have the messages in order. And when we enabled sessions, this is the sessions enabled queue. As you can see, all the messages are in order. And in this video, we saw what sessions are and how it helps us to implement first in first out behavior in our queues and we saw how to write c sharp apps to interact with service bus queues and we saw practically how sessions work and the performance effects as well the queue that had sessions enabled took around 10 minutes to process all our messages now if i go into that queue that has sessions enabled and if i looked into the graphs as you can see here we have a burst of messages and the outgoing messages sum is a constant number and it took some time to process it but if i look into the queue that does not have sessions enabled basically the incoming messages and the outgoing messages they overlap that's why we saw this instant message processing behavior there this is the end of the video if you have any further questions or comments let me know down below don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today and thanks for watching